if you want to heal from almost any condition, we have to balance out you the and change your body's internal environment. So here's what you got to remember too: foods don't heal you. Turmeric doesn't heal you. Broccoli doesn't heal you. Your body heals itself. But your body has a hard time healing things when it's in a a certain type of environment. Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite topics, and that is how to heal your body using Chinese medicine. Now listen, there's lots of different types of medicine, everything from Greek medicine, which is a lot of what our current Western medical system is based off of today. If you live in uh, North America, uh, Europe, or even areas like Australia, it's a lot of Western medicine, okay? Uh, but there's also other forms of medicine. Again, TCM Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, Egyptian medicine, biblical medicine. Uh, maybe you're wondering, hey, what type of medicine do I teach? The biggest combination that I personally teach is a combination of Chinese medicine mixed with other forms of ancient medicine, including biblical medicine uh, and Israeli medicine. And so that's what I teach most is primarily Chinese medicine. A lot of those principles mixed with some biblical medicine, and especially the spiritual health aspect. Uh, but you know, there's so much value in things to learn. And I'll tell you this, I've worked with thousands and thousands of people over the years, patients in the past, and I can tell you that this is one of the most powerful forms of medicine in the world, Chinese medicine. It's where we get herbs like ginseng. Uh, it's where we have herbs like Don Kwai. Uh, herbs like ginger and turmeric that are used in medicine today. A lot of the research comes out of Asia today uh, that's based on ancient Chinese medicine. A lot, one of the big reasons why people in Japan have such a long lifespan in Okinawa is they practice a lot of the philosophies and ideas learned in ancient Chinese medicine. And so today I'm going to share with you and dive into how to heal your thyroid, how to heal your gut how to heal autoimmune disease, how to heal almost every health problem you can imagine using ancient Chinese medicine. And if you're a person listening to this, you're saying, man, I've had this problem and I've tried, I've, I've had candida for years. I've tried something to heal and it hasn't worked. I'm telling you right now, this can help it. If you're saying to yourself, I have had low energy and fatigue and I've tried all this stuff and I'm still not better, then this can help you. And I'm telling you this because I'm going to share this personally. Like I had, um, when I first opened my functional medicine clinic in Nashville, and this was around the end of 20, uh, 2007, uh, 2008, I was pretty healthy. But after two years of being in practice and I worked, you know, 60 hours a week, I was working out and I wouldn't turn it off. I would wake up in the morning, work all day. I started developing digestive issues and I couldn't figure out why because I was eating so healthy. And so I started even doing more research on nutrition, changing my diet, and I got a little bit better. I started doing bone broth. I started doing certain herbs like ginger and probiotics. And my digestion got maybe anywhere from 25 to 50% better, but I still was having a digestive issue. I then found a man, and his name was Gil Banami. He is an Israeli acupuncturist. And I started meeting with him and talking with him. And, and he shared with me, Josh, it's not your your digestive system, it's not your stomach, it's not your, uh, your intestines, it's your liver is actually so fired up because you are working so much, so many hours, that that's actually caused, and, and he said the emotion you're experiencing is frustration and impatience. He said, you want to help so many people and you want it to, everything to happen faster. And he said, you have this emotion so often that it's actually causing toxicity, it's causing liver problems, which then is affecting your, 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 uh, the rest of your digestive system. And I was bl blown away by this. I said, okay, so you're telling me by just reducing frustration and becoming more patient that my digestive system is going to clear up. And he said, yes. And I started doing that. And after three months, my digestive system completely healed. Now, I do want to say he recommended some dietary things as well. He recommended uh, certain uh, herbs to support my liver and calm my liver. He recommended uh, a few other things. I started doing this, but after three months, my digestive system completely healed. And so I want to share this with you. Even if you've been to a functional medicine doctor, even if you are a doctor listening to this and you're still having a health problem, these principles I'm going to share with you today are revolutionary or they're ancient. 
but they should be making their way back. And there are so many things I love about ancient medicine, but also uh, the fact that ancient Chinese medicine was one of the first forms of personalized nutrition. Today, a lot of times people like to be thrown all in one bucket. Now, listen, I've written books on different topics, everything from the collagen diet to keto diet to you know, other diets. And, but here's the thing to know, there's not one diet for everybody. Some people can do great on the keto. Some people do terrible. Some people do well. Some people, not a lot, but a few people do pretty well uh, on, on doing vegan and, other, and most people do terrible. So all that being said, it's important to remember that everybody is different. So here's the thing to know about ancient Chinese medicine. It was one of the first forms of holistic medicine. It's looking at the entire body and how your body um, works in your organ systems work together synergistically. Okay. So again, it's, it's holistic nutrition. It's looking at everything. And so we're looking at your body, your mind, and your spirit in ancient Chinese medicine. So I'm going so to get into all of this and let's dive in now. All right. So here's the thing to know. The general philosophy is this, is that your body in order to heal, you need to create a certain type of environment internally. Okay. Now I want to give you this reference to think about this as well. In order for, uh, let's say candida today in Western medicine, if you have candida, a lot of times we think, okay, it's because I consume too much sugar, or maybe I had certain genetics that caused me to have candida. In ancient Chinese medicine, they'd say, no, you have candida because your body is damp. There's dampness. So think about this. We had flooding years ago in Nashville. And afterwards, I had all these, this was years ago when I was still in practice. And I had patients coming in who had mold toxicity because after the flooding, Things weren't dried up properly, so they started growing mold in their homes. This happens. But it had to be a certain environment for mold to grow. What's that, What's that environment? It's damp. So in Chinese medicine, they said it's your environment internally. So here, here's how I want you to think about this. Your body internally can become imbalanced in certain ways. Your body can become too hot or too cold. It can become too damp or too dry. It can have too much movement called wind or too little movement called stagnation. It can also have an imbalance of something called yin and yang, which is a lot, has a lot to do with your hormones. And then there's this element called chi, which is essentially your adrenals. How much energy do you have? And so it's all about if you want to heal from almost any condition, we have to balance out you, the, and change your body's internal environment. So here's what you got to remember too. Foods don't heal you. Turmeric doesn't heal you. Broccoli doesn't heal you. Your body heals itself, but your body has a hard time healing things when it's in a, a certain type of environment. Think about this. How well can you run on ice if you don't have sk on, on skates? Or how much can you run in water? You can't run very well in water because your environment is there versus if you're on a track, you can run fast. All that being said, if you want to heal from candida, autoimmune disease, cancer, any of these health conditions, you have to change your internal environment. And so again, an issue like dampness, well, how do you heal from, how do you heal candida? You dry up dampness. And dampness can be mucus, it's phlegm, like, or it's a white coating on your tongue, but mucus or dampness can go from your tongue into your nostrils and you have snot, right? It can go into your chest and you can have bronchitis. It can go into your colon chronically and you can have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease where you actually have mucus in your colon. And here's what's happening today in our Western medical system. People are going into their conventional Western doctors with issues like ulcerative colitis and they're given medications like antibiotics to kill bacteria or to kill, but it, but it doesn't fix the environment. It will never have you completely heal versus here's what I found. If somebody goes in with these conditions I mentioned that are dampness, like IBS with diarrhea or, uh, or any type of inflammatory bowel disease or candida or a lot of times leaky gut, if you just dry up the dampness with your diet, your body can completely heal. It's absolutely astounding what can happen when you follow these ancient Chinese principles that we are talking about here today. So let's talk about your environment, the things that can happen. It can be, I mentioned, too hot or too cold. What's too, 
what, what's too cold? So by the way, why do we call it a cold? If you have like a cold or flu or, you know, or associated, if you're sick, why do we call it a cold? That comes from ancient Chinese medicine. It's because your body is cold internally. So what are all the ancient remedies for healing a cold? Warming herbs and spices in meals that warm you up. Think about this. Here's the ancient remedies. Garlic, it's warming. Cinnamon, it's warming. Cayenne pepper, really warming. Uh, oil of oregano, really warming herb. These herbs are very warming. What are the other herbs to help you heal? They're bitter. Bitter foods dry up dampness. You ever taste echinacea straight? It's terrible, but it's really bitter, okay? And so again, if you have a common cold, it tends to be your cold and sometimes your damp. And so how do you heal? Well, in Chinese medicine, you would eat meals and consume foods and herbs that were warming and drying, okay? And that's how you heal. That's how you heal a cold. When I first moved to Nashville, listen to this, I was taking care of a pastor, Pastor John, and he, was, he had a cold and I, and I said, hey, Pastor John, what? Well, what are you doing for your cold right now? Because I was about to give him recommendations. And he said, well, right now I'm just drinking some hot toddies. I'm like, hot toddy? What, what is that? Now, I grew up in the north in Ohio, and now I was down in the south, and so I'd never heard of a hot toddy. And he said, well, it's whiskey and cinnamon and honey. And I'm like, well, okay. I, I started to understand because whiskey is the hottest of all the liqueurs. It warms you up, okay? Liquor warms you up versus beer is cooling. Now, listen, I'm not recommending you go and drink a bunch of liquor and whiskey if you've got a cold or flu, okay? That's not a recommendation of mine. But it actually makes sense because it's a hot liqueur. And if you didn't have any other options, well, it's very warming to the body. And so in certain cases, it actually isn't such a bad remedy. But, so here's the thing to remember. You change your environment, that's how you heal. If somebody has a lot of heat, that's high blood pressure, redness in the face, inflammation, you do a lot of cooling herbs as well. Things like rosemary is fantastic, cat's claw, skull cap. These are things that are anti-inflammatory and cooling together. And so, again, I could go through every one of these, but here's the thing you got to remember. In Chinese medicine, if you want to heal, you've got to change your internal environment. If you're too hot, you got to cool your body. If you're too cold, you got to warm it. If you're too damp, you got to get dry, too dry, damp. If your body isn't moving, it's called stagnation. That's typically a liver problem. You can take certain herbs and foods to activate your liver so your liver starts moving things throughout your body more quickly, which can help you heal. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go through a bunch of conditions, everything from hypothyroidism to uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, autoimmune disease, all kinds of stuff, low testosterone in men. And I'm going to talk about how to heal those conditions using ancient Chinese medicine. Now, in addition, before I do that, though, I want to tell you, how do you know what you have? In Chinese medicine, most acupuncturists and oriental medical doctors, they will do a diagnosis based on looking at your tongue and feeling your pulse. It's so funny today in Western medicine, we'll go into our doctors. I remember as a kid, they'd have me stick my tongue out and basically they're just looking at your tonsils, but where did they get the idea to stick your tongue out for certain things? Well, that's an ancient practice. They would look at your tongue, an ancient practitioner, and actually be able to tell what's going on. So listen to this. Different areas of your tongue relate to different organs. So the very back of your tongue is connected to your kidneys and your adrenal glands and even your reproductive organs. So if you stick out your tongue and you just have a coating or something going on on the very back of your tongue, that's indicative of adrenal fatigue, okay, or reproductive system issues. If you've got a coating on your entire tongue, especially the middle of your tongue, that's dampness, that's your stomach and your pancreas and your spleen, and that tends to be a candida. Um, the edges of your tongue, you ever see anybody and they have bite, it's almost like they have ridges on the side of their tongue or bite marks. That tends to be liver and gall, that tends to be your liver or your gallbladder. Your body isn't digesting fat. Well, you have a lot of frustration and patience in your life and, and, and that can be there. The tip of your tongue, if it's very red, means it's affecting your heart and that has to do with sleep most frequently. And so, and if your tongue is very red or blue, if your tongue is blue, it's a blood deficiency. Um, if your tongue is really red, it's too much heat in your body. If your tongue is really a pale white, uh, I mean, that, that's another thing. I, I'm sorry. That's more of a, a, a blood. You need to build your blood versus blue. 
is circulation. You're not getting blood moving enough. And so all that being said, your tongue can tell you so much similar thing with your pulse. You can feel somebody's pulse and tell exactly what's going on in, in, in their body. So that being said, that's how you know. Okay. You, you can look at your tongue and then you can look at a map. If you have big cracks in the middle of your tongue, it's called a yin deficiency. Uh, and so, and, and let me talk about these terms again. So I talked about hot, cold. Those things are obvious. What, what's yin and yang? Well, yin is the more feminine aspect of your body and your health. It's hormones, more estrogen, progesterone. It's more yoga. It's meditation. It's building peace. It's relaxation. That's yin. Okay. Certain foods build your yin. So a lot of people are deficient in yin due to certain things. Emotions can cause some of these deficiencies. And yang is more CrossFit, bodybuilding, um, you know, adventure, you know, skydiving. These things are build your yang, okay? All of us want to have a balance. We have to want to have a lot of yin and a lot of yang, a lot of this type of energy in our body. And here's what qi is. It's spelled Q-I. Qi in Chinese medicine is essentially is how full is your battery? What is your internal battery at? Because this affects every organ and every part of your entire body, what your overall qi or energy is. Now listen, as we all age, our qi naturally decreases, but we want to keep your qi up over time. It's one of the most important things for your overall health. So we're going to talk about how to do that. That's really related very closely to the health of your thyroid and hypothyroidism and your testosterone and human growth hormone, both as a man and a woman specifically, those things are very, very important. So we're going to talk about this right now, these different conditions, but I want to say this as well. Different emotions affect your health differently as well, which we will talk about here in a minute. But just to say this, like if somebody, uh, like for myself, when I was having this liver issue is because I was being frustrated. I was frustrated and impatient because I wasn't reaching enough people. Things weren't growing fast enough. Now you would tend to think, Hey, if somebody's just frustrated and impatient, that doesn't affect their organs. That doesn't affect their health. It affects them immensely. If you're a worrier, that can absolutely destroy your digestive system. If you have a lot of fear, the emotion of fear, which that can be fear of disappointing others, fear of failure, fear of disappointing your parents, that absolutely causes disease to build up in your reproductive organs and your adrenal glands. The emotion of grief, maybe uh, you're still mourning the loss of a friend, maybe, maybe a friend from years ago, or yet went through a divorce, or your child moved away. There could be all these different things, or maybe you're grieving, you just you had a, the dream job and you lost it and you got fired and, and now you're still bumming out about it, but it's years later. Grief, that affects your lungs and colon, which is your entire immune system. That can set somebody into autoimmune disease. The emotion of anxiety, thinking about and worrying about the future. By the way, anxiety is living in the future rather than the present, and depression is living in the past. We got to live in the present. All that being said, going back to this, anxiety affects your heart and part of your central nervous system. And so as you guys can see, these emotions affect, why does a child who has a nightmare oftentimes wet the bed? Have you guys heard that if a child is really scared or has a nightmare, they can wet the bed? Why? Because the emotion of fear from a nightmare causes dysfunction of the kidneys, the bladder, those organ systems, okay? So we know this to be true that when we have certain emotions or experience certain emotions, it affects organs. Your mental health affects your physical health in such a real manner. And here's the thing I'm going to tell you. If you've got hypothyroidism, if you've got candida, if you've got low testosterone, part of that's nutritional, which I am going to get into in a second. But so much of it is emotional. We have to take care of our emotional health and really pinpoint, here's the negative emotion I'm experiencing now or the negative memory that I keep replaying, whether it's conscious or subconscious. We got to deal with these emotional issues and heal. 
Now, people have different philosophies and different ways they do that. I tend to turn to you know, the Bible and my faith to, to heal. But hey, whatever it is for you, you have to address these issues and heal these issues. It's so important to healing. So let's dive in. Let's, talk, let's start off with hormones. Let's talk about hypothyroidism. I've referenced that several times. Here's what happens in Western culture or Western medical system today. Somebody goes into their doctor with hypothyroidism. Their doctor will say, here's a drug like Synthroid. And, and here's why they give you Synthroid. They believe your health is best monitored by a number on blood work. Okay, your TSH levels are off, your T3, your T4. A Chinese medicine practitioner is looking at your body's, and how are you feeling? How are your organ systems functioning? How, how is your entire body and being doing holistically? How's your overall health? They're not looking at one little single number on a chart. That's all that matters to the Western medical system. We're going to change this by using a synthetic chemical. It's a chemical. We're going to put a chemical in your body and think we're going to fix things. Did you know every single medication on the planet has a side effect? Thyroid medications can affect your B vitamin levels and your energy. Now, a more holistic or natural doctor might say, you've got hypothyroidism. I'm going to give you selenium because that's good for the thyroid. I'm going to give you vitamin B12. I'm going to give you a diet free of sugar and these different things, you know, more fat. And what happens is somebody's thyroid will tend to get 50% better. Maybe iodine is another thing that can be deficient. And so some, someone will improve anywhere from 25 to 80%. The difference though is in Chinese medicine, they would actually look at the thyroid and they'd say, why is your thyroid, what, what, why is it hypothyroid? Why, why, why are those thyroid markers off or deficient? Well, it's because your thyroid is related to your adrenals mostly, okay? And when your battery gets low, energy stops going to the adrenal glands. So we need to First thing we do is go we take, take care of the adrenals. Hypothyroidism in Chinese medicine is known as a qi and yang deficiency. So essentially, it's more of those growth hormones you, you have, and it's also not enough uh, energy. And so in Chinese medicine, the herb that's known, let me first go to an Ayurvedic herb you're really familiar with. There's an Ayurvedic herb known as ashwagandha, which is a qi and yang builder. And it's also, if you look up clinical studies on ashwagandha study, thyroid or hypothyroidism, you're going to see lots of great medical studies on ashwagandha helping the thyroid. We didn't need a study to tell us that ashwagandha has been recommended for essentially hypothyroidism for 4,000 years. So that being said, you want to heal the thyroid. You got to do herbs that boost the chi and boost the yang. So it's ashwagandha. It's going to be bacopa. It's other adaptogenic herbs. There's a fantastic one called romania, which is great for adrenal fatigue. That's how you start to heal the body is with these herbs. And also saying, okay, why are, are, is your adrenal and thyroid, why are the batteries low on your adrenals and thyroid? It's because you're having the emotion typically of fear. Now you may say to yourself, oh, I don't have fear. I'm not scared. Fear can be you're worried about a deadline you're not going to hit. You're worried about how your boss is going to react if something doesn't go, go your way. Maybe you have a spouse who's really hard on you and you're worried about how they're going to react if you don't get all the things done. If you have hypothyroidism, the first thing you need to fix is fear of man, fear of what other people think about you, fear of other people judging you. You, 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 you got to get over any type of fear you have. Fear you're not good enough. You're not going to live up to the expectations of others. Fear you're not going to perform or you feel like you have to always perform and you're not living up to everything that you should be doing in life. If you're going to heal your thyroid, according to Chinese medicine, you have to overcome fear. How do you do that? You replace those memories. You say, you know what? That's not who I am. That's not who I'm. I'm not going to be a slave to this emotion anymore. And you start saying, what's the opposite of fear? It's courage. Okay. So you start working on your courage and self-esteem. Those are two things if you have hypothyroidism that you need to really focus on building is your courage and your self-esteem, okay? And you can find famous quotes. I go to Bible verses and say, God is for me, not against me. Like I focus on and realize that I don't, I don't care if this random person or this person that's unhealthy emotionally, if I please them, that, that, that's not my goal. My goal in life is to love and serve others. So again, going back to your purpose, going back to building your self-esteem and courage, that's number one way you heal your thyroid. Number two, those chi and yang boosting herbs like ashwagandha 
Number three is going to be your diet. So what's a chi building diet? Well, foods that are very dark in color and nutrient dense, they build and help the thyroid. You could go online and search Dr. Axe Chi or just search on any search engine, chi boosting foods. You're going to see things like berries or chi boosting. So blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. Seaweed builds your chi. Rice, short grain rice builds your chi. I love a type of rice called a sprouted gabba rice. Lots of green leafy vegetables. So dark green, blues, and purples, those are the most nourishing foods to the thyroid. Black sesame is gray. We just start eating a food that's very nutrient dense. Take herbs like ashwagandha and B vitamins are very good for your thyroid. So like a B complex and work on those emotions, unplug, restore. In order to heal your adrenals, the other thing, you got to overcome fear. But you also have to unplug and relax. Here's what I found. Like I was having adrenal liver issues, which was causing my digestive problems because I would work all day and then I would eat dinner. But then after dinner, even while I was watching maybe a TV or something, I would still be on my laptop. Even surfing the internet, that blue light, your brain is still on being told emergency, emergency. Like we get all these updates on our phone. Anytime you get like a text message, you hear that beep, your brain goes, whoa, hey, something's go. It's alert. It's alerting your brain. It's, it's causing your body to get in a fight or flight state with your adrenals. All right, let me talk about another condition, candida. If you want to heal candida, we got to dry up dampness, right? As I talked about. So how do you dry up dampness? Bitter foods. You know, in America and in Europe and Australia, a lot of these places today, we consume so many sweet and salty foods. It's all sweet and salty. Sweet is more dampening. Here's the most dampening food you should stay away from. Uh, if you've got candida, sugar, wheat is super dampening. Bananas, egg whites. Think about it. I'm talking about dampness. Bananas are mushy and slimy. It's almost like mucus, right? It's dampening. Egg whites are almost like snot. It's dampening. Now, listen, for some people, egg whites are amazing. If you have, don't have dampness, no coating on your tongue, this isn't for you. You can eat eggs, you can have bananas, all that stuff. But if you have dampness in candida or inflammatory bowel disease, you shouldn't be eating bananas, you shouldn't be eating egg whites. Dairy is the most dampening food there is. Now, if you're doing a fermented kefir or something, and then you're doing lots of bitter stuff, you can probably get away with it. But again, all that being said, those are the foods you want to stay with. And oils, just pouring oil on stuff, that's very dampening. So the foods that are the least dampening are bitter herbs and spices. You ever taste just an herb straight? Oregano, thyme, rosemary, bay, like these foods are all bitter. Cinnamon, even it's more bitter sweet, but it's still bitter. So the number one way to get rid of candida is consume a lot of bitter herbs. Pau Darko, an amazing herbal tea to get rid of candida. That's P-A-U space D-A-R-C-O, Pau Darko. It's also an anti-parasite, but great anti-yeast or anti-candida herbal tea. You can also do sage. Sage helps you get rid of dampness um, very well. Thyme is great for mucus. If you have a lot of snot mucus, thyme helps you get rid of that. But you got to do a lot of bitter herbs and foods. Andrograph is one of the best, okay? But Pau Darko tea, if you've got candida mixed with some ginger and cinnamon, it's going to be a very effective herbal tea combination to get rid of candida. And then you got to stop consuming the foods that cause dampness. Now, you would think something like an avocado would be healthy and good for everybody. And it's good for everybody but people that have dampness, maybe in a major liver issues. But avocado is an amazing superfood. Here's the other thing to remember. There's not one diet for everybody. Chinese medicine was the first to say everybody should be following a different diet. To, to, to some degree, you need to eat one man's food as another man's poison. And so going back to this as we're talking about candida, and a lot of people have this, if you aren't absorbing nutrients well, if you have leaky gut syndrome, a lot of people have this dampness, candida, in the body. And even if you don't have it on your tongue, you may have it in your stomach or other areas. You may have this type of candida that's really destroying your digestive system. So going back to this, bitter herbs are going to be number one. And bitter foods. What are bitter foods? Arugula, broccoli, rape, dandelion greens, radishes, uh, artichokes, spinach, foods that are kind of bitter. Pretty much everything you don't like or a lot of people don't like to eat because we're not accustomed to them, even though they eat them a lot in your, certain areas of the world. 
So that being said, you got to get bitter foods and herbs. If you have candida, you got to consume herbs that help you get rid of it, like Powdarko. And then you take a probiotic supplement too. I'd recommend some sauerkraut and some probiotics. Take a probiotic supplement that has soil-based organisms, which we don't get in our diet anymore. Um, that's what I would do for candida, okay, is you got to get rid of the dampness with bitter foods and herbs and lots of soups, lots of bone broth soups, things like that. You got to warm yourself and you got to dry yourself. That's how you get rid of candida. Let's talk about low testosterone in men and a lot of women. By the way, if a woman is having trouble lactating, it's low testosterone. That's why fenugreek, which is a testosterone booster, is the number one thing that you put in something like uh, lactation cookies. So again, if you want to boost your testosterone, that's low yang in Chinese medicine. So in order to boost that, you need to support your adrenals and your yang hormones, your uh, hormones that build muscle, okay? So you want to do weightlifting rather than long-distance cardio if you have low uh, yang. So again, weightlifting and CrossFit or yang building. So those sorts of things for exercise if you have low testosterone. You also want to just spend some time relaxing, unplugging, not working all the time. Spend some time at the beach, walk in nature. Just go out and walk, do nothing. You're not an achiever. A lot of people have a chi issue or an adrenal issue because our, our culture today is Greek, which they're not holistic. It's very isolated. It's like they'll say that you're successful if you make a lot of money or have a lot of fame and popularity. That's what people think today. You know, like the number one kids today, like the number one thing they want to be is YouTubers. Did you guys know that came out? Like, that's crazy. Well, that's because our culture today says, you're successful if you're famous and make money. In ancient China or Israel, if we're talking about everything from biblical medicine to Chinese medicine, anywhere in the East, they would say, no, success is not that. Success is the effect you've had on others. It's your legacy. How well are your kids doing? How many lives have you transformed? How many people have you touched and blessed? Those types of things. That's what they, you know, how is your, not just your health, how is the health of your tribe and your community, your family, like the people you're caring for, how are they doing too? That's what health was back then. It's not that today. All that being said, so we think we all, it's always on us. We constantly have to work. We've got to do everything. That wears out your adrenal glands. If you have low testosterone, we want to really support your adrenals, okay? I mentioned earlier, fenugreek is fantastic. Another great one is ginseng. Now, ginseng is best for people over the age of 50, especially men, uh, but that's really important. Uh, ginseng is a great adaptogen. Codnopsis is a great uh, adaptogen. Rhodiola rosea, for a lot of women, holy basil and tulsi, but doing a lot of these adaptogenic herbs are great for testosterone. They're great for energy. Weightlifting. And doing more, uh, you know, interval training, that sort of thing can be great for human growth more than supporting yang in your body. But those are some of the things you need to do. And then, uh, yeah, those, those are the biggest things, really. If you do that, you're going to build testosterone. You're going to build chi. All of those things can really, really help. All right, I'm going to cover one more condition. Then, by the way, I'm going to say this. Uh, I'm going to have a part... I'm going to have to continue talking about this. You'll see in a lot of these episodes coming up, I'm going to talk about ancient Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, these ancient forms of medicine that can help you heal because it is so important. Let's talk about autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease, your body starts attacking itself. It's immune related. And so in that case, in Chinese medicine, that means it's the lungs and colon. And... A lot of times that has to do with the emotion of grief or depression, okay? So that's the first thing you got to fix. If you have autoimmune disease, you have to take care of and overcome emotion. What's the opposite of being depressed, being joyful and happy? You got you to work on your joyfulness and happiness. That's how you overcome depression. Here's what depression is too. It's looking back. You're living in the past. Or you have a sense of loss and you haven't let go of something. I had a patient once and she was a mom. Her daughter was her best friend and moved off to college. And after two years, her, this woman developed an autoimmune disease. I worked on her diet and it got 50% better. She saw great improvement, but not completely healed. We went back and found and started working on her depression by saying, and we pinpointed she was still mourning the loss. I asked her, hey, what do you get? What makes you sad? 
you know, well, what's the difference between now and five years ago? And she's, well, I had my daughter. She was my best friend. I hardly see her anymore. She was still mourning the loss of her daughter. Her daughter's still alive, but she just wouldn't spend the time with her. So we went and addressed that. And so she went and started, uh, wrote down five people she loved to spend time with. She, she, uh, we had her write down how, how often she'd love to see her daughter. And even though it wasn't every day, it was, you know, every other month and scheduling special time with her and sharing this with her daughter, we found solutions. She completely healed of her autoimmune disease. She had Hashimoto's thyroiditis completely healed. So think about this. So again, going back to this, are you grieving something that you feel like you've lost? Are you living in the past saying, I wish I could, maybe you had an injury and you wish you could go back and you can't, that'll affect your entire immune system. You got to work on joyfulness. How do you get joyful? Being joyful and grateful, write down all the things you're grateful for. Spend time with people that are encouragers, who you love to be around. Stop watching all the dark, depressing stuff on TV. Only watch the comedies and things that are fun and uplifting. They have good storylines. Heal your emotions, number one way to heal autoimmune disease. And here's the other thing. Think about this. Autoimmune disease is where your body is attacking itself. You're attacking. You're attacking yourself. So emotionally as well, in autoimmune disease, sometimes people are attacking themselves. Do you have shame and guilt? You're, you beat yourself up? You think that's just affecting you mentally? No, that's affect, affecting you physically. Don't know where your body's going and attacking itself. You've got, you, you, you can't be uh, you know, self-defeating. You can't go and beat yourself up. Number two, you got to really nourish your lungs and colon. The color of the foods that are related to that in Chinese medicine is the color pale yellow or white. So think about this, ginger and chicken broth. The, two, the top two superfoods for healing autoimmune disease is chicken broth and ginger tea. Now, when I was sick as a kid, my mom would give me chicken noodle soup and ginger ale. Now, first off, the ginger ale had 40 grams of sugar, so that was terrible. The chicken noodle soup had white flour noodles, MSG, and a bunch of garbage, but where did my mom get, and by, did anyone else have that? Their mom gave you, and I'd love to hear, hey, if, if, if you go and reply to this on Instagram, I'd love to hear from you guys on Instagram if that was ever your mom, or if you're resonating with what I'm talking about, go to my at Dr. Josh Axe handle on Instagram. But that was my mom. I got chicken noodle soup. I got ginger ale. But that came from an ancient Chinese remedy of ginger herbal tea and chicken broth as the ultimate meal to consume when you're sick but those light, pale yellow, easy to digest. And so it's lots of soups. That's how you heal autoimmune disease. Lots of chicken broth, loads of vegetables, things that are warming and drying up some dampness too are very good. Pears, that, that yellow color. So, you know, I have some pear, pears and collagen for breakfast. For lunch, chicken soup. For dinner, a turkey burger with steamed vegetables like cauliflower and maybe a little hummus. Like that's how you heal from autoimmune diseases, you overcome those emotions. And then, uh, of course, from a supplement and herb standpoint, I mentioned ginger is fantastic. Also, astragalus, it's yellow. That's amazing. Ginger and astragalus, the best for autoimmune disease, along with probiotics and collagen. That's what you want there to take care of that. So I've talked about a lot this episode. We've talked a lot about Chinese medicine, which is amazing. It's so healing, so many benefits. And I'm going to continue to talk about so much about this stuff in the future. I'm going to really dive in. So make sure to not miss these podcasts. Make sure to subscribe here. And if you've loved this episode specifically, hey, do me a favor, go on iTunes right now and make sure you... Uh, leave a five-star review. It just really helps in continuing to grow the show, reaching out there. And I appreciate you guys being on mission with me. Here's the truth. A lot of people don't know this. People don't know the truth about ancient medicine and how it can heal so many people. I'm on a mission to help people with that. I want to say, I want to thank, thank you so much for tuning in. Can't wait to be back, back, uh, back next week with another. I got a great interview, but also I'm going to talk a lot more. I'll do a part two, three, and much more on ancient Chinese medicine and other forms of ancient medicine here in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The products and ingredients discussed in this podcast are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. If you believe you may have a medical condition, please consult your doctor. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guests' qualifications or credibility. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect 
direct financial interest in products or services referred to herein.